okay uh, in the in the previous lecture uh, we we have uh, discussed the uh, cyber security cubes the first dimension that c i uh, a in this the second dimension of your uh, cyber security cube is the states of your data that is the transition storage and processing we'll try to explore this now right so that is the state of your data so the stored data refer to data at rest so data at rest means that a type of storage device retains the data when no user or process is using it so a storage device can be local on a computing device or centralized on a network so a number of options exist for storing the data so let us see them one by one okay so the uh, direct attached storage that das is a storage connected to a computer so a hard drive or usb flash drive is an example of direct attached storage for it right so uh, by default the systems are not set up to share the direct attached storage so the redundant array of independent disk that raid redundant array of independent disk that we say the raid uh, uses the multiple hard drives in an array which is a method of combining multiple disk so that the uh, operating systems sees them as a single disk so raid provides uh, improved performance and fault tolerance and another uh, you know storage the type of data storage is your network attached storage nas we say so this network attached storage devices is a storage device connected to a network that allows storage and retrieval of data from a centralized location by authorized network users so network attached storage devices are flexible and scalable meaning administrators can increase the capacity as needed so a storage area network architecture is a network based storage system so net the storage area network systems connect to the network using high speed interface allowing improved performance and the ability to connect multiple servers to a centralized disk storage repository so the cloud storage is a remote storage option that use space on a data center provider and is accessible from any computer with internet access like google drive icloud and dropbox are all examples of cloud storage providers that you find right so the second one is you find the data in transit okay so the challenge of protecting the stored data is uh, is the challenging part when data is at rest right so organizations have a challenge task in trying to protect stored data in order to improve data storage organizations can automate and centralize data backups like you know the direct attached storage can be one of the most difficult type of data storage to manage and control direct attached storage is vulnerable to malicious attacks on the local host storage data may also include backup data means backups can be manual or automatic so organizations should limit the type of data stored on direct attached storage 
so in particular uh, an organization would not store critical data on direct attached storage devices so the network storage systems offer a more secure option like network storage systems including your raid san and your nas provide greater performance and redundancy however the network storage systems are more complicated to configure and manage they also handle more data posing a greater risk to the organization if the device fails so the unique challenge of network storage systems including configuration testing and monitoring the systems monitoring the system so these are the uh, challenges of protecting stored data in the network so what are the methods of transmitting the data then so the data transmission involves sending information from one device to another device so we call this as your data in transit phase of your uh, i mean uh, the data state of your data so the data transmission uh, you know there are numerous methods to transmit information between the device uh, uh, including your uh, the sneaker nets your wired network and your wireless networks so sneaker net uses the removable media to physically move data from one computer to another whereas wired networks uses the cable to transmit the data in wireless network uses the radio waves to transmit the data so organizations will never be able to eliminate the use of a sneaker net in wired networks include copper wire and the fiber optic media so wired networks can serve a local graphical area sorry local geographical area we call it as your local area network lan or they can span great distance like your wide area network so this wired networks may be your uh, your lan sorry let me just check it out okay so this this wide area networks may be lan or your wan they may be your lan or your wan right so the wireless the, the third one next one is your wireless network wireless networks are replacing wired networks so wireless networks are becoming faster and able to handle more bandwidth so wireless networks expand the number of guest users with mobile devices on small office home office soho and enterprise networks so both wired and the wireless networks use packets or data units so the term packet refers to a unit of data that travel between an origin and a destination on the network the destination on the the network so standard protocols like the internet protocol ip or hypertext transfer protocol that http define the structure and formation of data packets so these standards are open source and are available to the public so protecting the confidentiality integrity and availability of transmitted data is one of the most important responsibility of a cyber security professionals right let me just check it out uh okay we use this pen now 
I think it will work now. Okay. So then let us see this uh, in the, the state of data in that, you know, data when it is in transit, then there is a challenge of protecting the data in the transit. So how to protect that? So data, when data is in transit, how to protect that data? So to protect the protection of transmitted data is one of the most challenging job of a cybersecurity professionals. So with the growth in mobile and wireless devices, cybersecurity professionals are responsible for protecting massive amount of data crossing their network on a daily basis. The cybersecurity professionals must deal with several challenges in protecting this data. So what are those? You can see in this diagram that protecting data confidentiality, protecting data integrity, and protecting data availability. So in protecting data uh, confidentiality, in this, the, the protecting data confidentiality means the cyber criminals can capture, save, and steal data in transit, right? So cyber professionals must take steps to counter these actions. Whereas in protecting data integrity, cyber criminals can intercept and alter data in transit. So cyber security professionals deploy data integrity systems that test the integrity and authenticity of transmitted data to counter these actions, as we explained in the uh, previous lecture, right? Then comes to your data, uh, protecting data availability. So cyber criminals can use rogue or unauthorized devices to interrupt data availability. A simple mobile device can pose as a local wireless access point and trick unsuspecting uh, users into accessing, sorry, associating with the rogue device. So the cyber criminals can hijack an authorized connection to a protected service or device. So network security professionals can implement mutual authentication systems to counter these actions. Mutual Authentication system uh, systems requires the users to authenticate to the server and request the server to authenticate to the users. So here you can find some countermeasures uh, for when data uh, is in transit to protecting that particular data. You may use the VPNs or the, the remote access that SSL or IP security you may use the encryption or decryption or hashing functions for check integrity checks and redundancy or hot standby. So these are some methods are used by the cybersecurity professionals to protecting the data, <coughs> you know, uh, confidentiality, data integrity and data availability during the data uh, in transit. Right. So the next one is. Uh, this is uh, when the data is in, in transit. So then the, the next state of your data is in process. The state of your data is data in process. So the forms of data processing and computation, uh, the third state of your data is your data in process, I said. So this refers to data during initial input, modification, computation, and the output. So protection of data integrity starts with the initial input of data. Then organizations use several methods to collect data, such as manual data entry or scanning forms or file uploads and the data collected from sensors. So each of these methods poses potential threats to data integrity, the data integrity part, right? So uh, an example of data corruption, 
during the input process includes data entry errors or disconnected malfunctioning or uh, inoperable system sensors so other examples can include uh, mislabeling and incorrect or mismatched data formats right so the data modification refers to any changes to the original data such as users manually modifying data or programs processing and changing data and the equipment failing resulting in data modification so processes like encoding decoding compression decompression and uh, encryption decryption are all examples of data modification malicious code also results in the data corruption part so in that case when data corruption also occurs during the data when uh, during the data output process the data output refers to outputting data to printers electronic displays or directly to other devices so the accuracy of output data is critical because output provides information and influences decision making so examples of output data corruption include the incorrect use of data delimiters incorrect communication configurations and improperly configured printers so these are some of the forms of your data processing and the computation so this refer this uh, refers to your i mean uh, initial input modification uh, computation and the are the output so in this what are the challenges the challenges of protecting data in process again similar to your you know data in transit protecting against invalid data modification during processing can have an uh, adverse impact so software errors are the reasons for many misshapes and uh, disasters for example just two weeks before the christmas some of the amazon's third party retailers experienced a change in the uh, advertised price on their items to just one cent so the glitch Uh, lasted for one hour so the error resulted in thousands of shoppers getting the deal of a lifetime and the company losing revenue so in 2016 the nest uh, thermostat malf uh, malfunctioned and left users with no heat so the nest thermostat Uh, is a smart technology owned by google right so a software glitch left users literally out in the cold that happens there right so uh, a, a software update went wrong forcing the devices batteries to drain and leaving it unable to control temperature as a result customers were unable to heat their homes or get hot water on one of the coldest weekends of the year so protecting data during processing requires well designed systems so cyber security professionals design policies and procedures that require testing maintaining and updating systems to keep them operating with the least amount of errors so you find the counter measures for the data in process you find access control data validation and data duplications data duplications so these are the states of your data so this is the second dimension of cyber security second dimension of cyber security uh, uh, queue so i would like to stop this session here